Rod, I'm Raymond, and I'm going to show you how to make floating jig heads. Well, uh, the whole reason of doing this video is uh, if you've looked into doing this at all, there's not a whole lot of information out there on the internet. Uh, I did a lot of digging before, right before we got into this, and luckily I just met the right people up on the walleye run that had kind of done it and guided me through what it is now. And uh, so I hats off to them for that because otherwise it, it, it's hard when you're trying to get into it by yourself um, and for some reason not a lot of people like to share the information about it I, I don't get it so this is from me to you uh, you can tweak this however you'd like the the process that I'm gonna show you is what works best for us we've tried a few different things and uh, we just prefer this over others uh, we do the boiling process done the baking I don't really care for it there's too many times you go through the whole process of putting the hooks in the molds and then you got six to ten molds in the oven all at one time and half of them don't turn out because any slight air pocket in them things and it just it the the finish on them doesn't it, it doesn't appease me anyhow so uh, that's why i prefer the the boiling process but um where do you get this stuff from you get your esp beads which is expandable polystyrene from haggins fishing components their catalog or you can get to uh, hagginsfish.com. Uh, you can get it shipped to your house in a 10 pound, two gallon bucket for about 50, 55 bucks, I believe is the last time I ordered it. Um, they're originally intended for crankbaits. They can make, they say the 10 pound bucket will make about 750 crankbaits. But um, just a good guesstimate is if you're making the quarter ounce jig heads, you're gonna get about, 10 to 12,000 jig heads, depending on how busy you and a few buddies maybe want to be. Um, that's, a, that's a lot of jig heads to go through. But anyhow, I got the do it mold here. I got the quarter ounce for uh, demonstrational purposes. We also do the, the eighth ounce one as well. Um, but just for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the quarter ounce. Um, you're gonna need a C clamp. You can get these at Harbor Freight for, they run them on sale for like a buck 50 or anything like that. Um, and your hooks, the, the hooks are an argument I think you could have with anybody. Uh, a lot of people like the Mustad and they're great. Yeah, I've used them. I got no complaints other than the price because compared to some other brands out there, the Mustads are the most expensive. I use the VMC brand of hooks. Uh, they're about half the price as Mustads and i I believe that they're the exact same quality and durability as the Mustads as well. Um, for the quarter ounce, we use a, a one ot black nickel hook. It just seems to work the best. I believe the largest you can go is a two ot because from your the shank to the tip, so from the hook up to the tip here, the largest that gap can be is a half an inch. And I want to say that a two ot is a half inch on the money. So we go with the one aught just because I like to stay safe. But uh, also the two aught with the black nickel, it don't, the jig head doesn't float. And if I'm gonna have a floating jig head, I want it to float. Um, black nickel, one aught for the quarter ounce. You can use anything smaller than a two aught, you just can't go over that. Now for the eighth ounce size of jig head, I use a size two and a bronze finish. The only reason I use the bronze is because it's just a little bit lighter, so the actual jig head itself will float. If you jump up to the black nickel in the uh, size two, um, same size of hook, it's, it's not gonna float. It's buoyant, it, you know, it wants to rise. Some of them will stay right in the middle of the water column, but they don't like to float up on top of the water, so. Uh, that's why I go with the the bronze now. I do usually I do great every year fishing up there with both sizes um, I've never had any problems with my hooks being Super bendy or breaking or anything like that. So that's why I've stuck with the VMC brand um, I get them up at Jan's Netcraft up in Toledo and a great place if you're wanting to get into making any kind of fishing component really along with Haggins too, so Nonetheless, uh, last thing I think I have here is a lead top. The one thing you need for the boiling process, put your hooks in there, you put your, your beads in there, and you're going to need to put this guy on there and put the C-clamp on. This is stops all of your material from coming up once you put it in the water because it does float. Um, 
pretty easy to make. You just uh, need a, a lead melter or know somebody that does and go out there and you act just act like you're making regular jig heads, but once you go through the line, I just made a big pass all the way around and then down the middle and you get your lead top. Take it out, break your jig heads off, this is what you get. Um, it's, it's pretty cool for no more than what it is, really. So I'm going to pan in here. I'm going to show you how we put our hooks in and uh, go on from there. So we'll get to it. Okay, so we got some of our hooks started here. Put the next three in and then go on with it. You just need to be really careful here when you're uh, putting these hooks in that you get everything lined up perfectly. Because if not, you'll go to close this mold up and if your hooks aren't in the slots where they need to be, well, they're going to probably go all over the place and that's not fun. So, alright, everything seems to be lined up pretty much where it needs to be. We'll give this a close. That's a good sound. Just make sure you hold that with your uh, opposite hand and you can grab the material with the other in our ketchup container if you want to call it that and just start filling it up and I usually fill it to where it just comes below that hole there because this stuff will expand quite a bit if you choose to use these condiment containers uh, sometimes you might need to give it a squeeze those beads will get stuck on themselves but for the most part it works out pretty good now that one I got a little much in so give suck some of that out we'll put this top around here throw the C clamp on tighten him up and he is good to go all right so we have our pot of water boiling here um, so you don't burn yourself you're gonna want to get yourself a pair of channel locks or vice grips big pair of pliers whatever you want to want to use to put it in there uh, grab that thing set it in there I'm gonna set the time on the stove here for nine minutes and uh, we'll be back then okay we are just about done there it is shut that off and uh, grab this here also be very very careful when doing this we'll make sure you let this drip off a little bit and then we will take it over to the sink and put it in some cold water and surprisingly it don't take that long you give this thing about 30 seconds or so and it's cool enough to take out so I'm going to set this back on the tripod so I can pop these guys out. Alright, so I just took it out of the water. Do this real quick. Top comes off. You can kind of see what it looks like there. That topper stops it from coming out the top completely. And then this is what, you're, what you'll look like. And we'll just pop these guys out. And then on to the next batch you go. All right, well, hey, that is just about it as far as making the actual jig heads themselves go. It's rather self-explanatory and pretty simple process once you get it down. Um, one big tip I would say is uh, if you have multiple molds going at one time, make sure you're drying them out. Um, with any kind of a dishcloth, I prefer to uh, keep a small air compressor out in the garage with an air nozzle on it. And uh, once I take the jig heads out, I'll take them out to the garage, I'll blow them out, and when they're dry, bring them back in, and then you can kind of continue your process. If you don't, uh, and you go to put these beads back in there with any kind of moisture in the mold or on top of it, it's going to cling to that moisture like uh, static electricity or something almost. So you'll have air pockets down in the cavity. Um, sometimes it'll fill up the hole it won't even let you pour material into the top of it it'll just fill that hole up um, so that that's my big tip there is make sure you're drying the molds out before you're putting your your beads back in again so uh, next step I want to do is um, 
the painting process. So there's a whole world out there of different kind of paints you can use, but I'll take you down to the basement and show you how I do mine, what kind of paints I use, and then um, once that dries, I can uh, show you how I do a clear coat. So uh, let's head down there and we'll start doing that. Well, hey, we're down here in the basement. I was just gonna go over, like I said upstairs, some of the different painting things you can do. Uh, one thing you can do is spray paint. Um, a lot of people like it, it's easy to do. I don't personally prefer it for myself. I've done it in the past and you get a lot of overspray. Um, I didn't really care for that with the, the dipping process. I can do that downstairs here in my basement. And uh, we'll start things off with uh, this Createx brand is the, the brand of paint that I use to dip. It's a water-based airbrushing paint. What makes it nice about it being water-based is if you you decide personally when you're doing the dipping, if, uh, if it's too thick, you can thin it a little bit with just a few drops of water and it makes it nice. However, I've had really good luck with this brand, the Createx, that uh, I don't have to thin it at all. Um, and most of the colors that I have played with uh, cover in one coat. They get a really, really nice finish to them in one coat. The only color I have to double dip is this uh, hot pink. It's uh, fluorescent hot pink. I don't know for whatever reason it. You could use just one coat, but it just uh, it looks better with two. So I'll uh, pan in here. I got about. 250 to 300 jigs set up. I'll go through and dip them. I'll show you how I dry them and then we'll wait for them to dry and I'll come back and do a clear coat. All right, well, we're pretty much all set up to do our dipping with the paint here. Uh, just wanted to run through this real quick. This is how I set my jigs up when I dip them. I have some CPVC with some pipe insulation wrapped around there. No, nothing fancy, but uh, it just makes it really nice to be able to hold on to the ends there and dip. I, uh, I use a little Dixie cup, so I kind of have them set up in sets of four, and uh, you'll be able to see that a little bit closer when we, when we start dipping. So um, that's how I have that set up. Let's get to it. All right, so here we are. I just filled the Dixie cup up with some chartreuse color. I got my uh, my jig heads here, and we're just gonna do some some dipping. You can do this pretty quick. I have these set up in little lots of four that you can just dip in and roll right through with it. And I'll do about three or four sets, and then sometimes uh, I'll flip them over. You'll get these, if your jigs are too close together, they'll want to keep that paint together there. Just separate them up. You don't want them drying together. And on four, I'll give it a flip. Give it a chance to, you know, kind of run down the collar there. And uh, just wait a few seconds. And I'll flip it back over and do the rest of them. One little loner. All right, and that is it as far as painting them goes. Uh, I'm gonna take this over to the drying rack and hang it up. All right, so we're here at the rack. Just gonna pause that guy. Put this on here, and I just got a couple of clamps I put on on the ends. And then turn it back on, and it's good to go. We'll get this thing uh, filled up with a couple more colors and uh, let them dry. All right, we are all loaded up. There's approximately 300 jigs on there. And just got some different colors going on. Uh, Tried a new one, I think it's coming around right now. Tried this gold color here. So we'll see how that how that does this year. But uh that's what that is. 
So we'll let all these dry and then come back for a clear coat. All right guys, well hey, here we are with our final step in making our jigs. We're gonna put a clear coat on. One thing I would like to mention before we do so is if you wanna put eyes on your jigs, right now is gonna be the time to do that. You know, we've let our paint dry, we've let it cure up. So now is gonna be that time to put them eyes on before the clear coat. If you wanna use a Sharpie marker, you can do that. Put a dot on each side. Some people like to use paint pens. Uh, I've even done in the past where I've taken a finishing nail and I'll have a little pile of black paint sitting there. Dip the finishing nail in that. Tap each side of the jig. Works just as well. And then uh, you let that dry and then you can put a clear coat on. However, it's a lengthy process in doing so. And I catch just as many fish without eyes as I do with. So I, I just prefer not to do it. But uh, on with the clear coat. We'll uh, get down to it. This is the product that I use. It's called CS Coatings Seal Coat. It's a one step, no measure, no mess sort of thing. It's already, it's a dipping process. All you got to do is dip them in there and it's good to go. So open this thing up. Dump our stuff in there. And we will start this clear coat. Now this is a little bit trickier because you got to let this stuff drip. It's about as much fun as watching paint dry. Come on. You can do it. One more. Yeah, I know you got it in you. Yep. Oh. Uh, three more. Sometimes I'll just try to wipe it off there on the side of the cup. Flip it up. Let it run. And back over for this one. So one. Two. I'm going to get three. And it doesn't matter what you do, eventually you're going to have drips on each side. That's why I'm doing this with cardboard. Just letting it run down. Come back and do it again. Those two, they just want to be together. Alright, let's take this over and hang it up. All right, guys, real quick, I figured I'd give you another color here. I don't know if it'll show up any better on this chartreuse and it did that purple or, or what. Drip, drip, drip. Flip. All right, well, hey, that is going to wrap things up, I do believe. One thing I did forget to mention when we were making the molds, you're going to have this little spur on top when you take the jigs out. You're going to need to cut that off. I do apologize. I do not have a pair of my cutters here to show you, so I pulled some up online just to give you an idea of what they look like. These are called diagonal cutters, also called spur cutters. You're going to want to get you a pair of those. They make a nice flush cut on top of your jig. I would not suggest using your traditional wire cutters or snips, dikes, whatever you want to call them. The blades are a little more aggressive on there. They're going to take a chunk out rather than a nice flush cut like you can do with these. 
you can go get them at Harbor Freight or Walmart for five or six bucks. You can go to any arts or craft store if you're feeling fancy and want to pay for a really nice handle. Whatever you decide, totally up to you. I do want to thank you for watching this video. It's been fun for me. Hopefully, uh, maybe, maybe you've even learned something from it. I guess that's its whole intention, isn't it? So uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to do so. I will try to get back to you as soon as I can. Other than that, I hope you have fun out there fishing. Who knows, maybe I'll even be fishing beside you. Be careful out there on the river. Uh, you don't want to be joining the Maumee swim team anytime soon. So thanks again for watching. Have fun fishing.